Hello, welcome to Digital Design with uh, uh, Fairy Luck. So, today class uh, uh, we will discuss about FSM optimizations. In particular, we will discuss about uh, uh, implication method of uh, FSM optimizations and uh, FSM encoding. Outline of today class is uh, FSM optimizations and particularly we have row matching method and partitioning method already we have discussed in the last classes. Today classes we will try to focus on this topic. So, particularly implication chart method and uh, we will discuss about FSM optimizations particularly state encoding. So, in this we will cover basically uh, sequential gray one hertz and one heuristic important heuristic based encoding FSM encoding. And Already in the last class we have discussed what is state minimizations or state optimizations. Minimizing the number of state it reduces the means uh, requirement of a bigger size state register and uh, possibly it reduces the combinational circuit complexity particularly next state logic it reduces. And for today classes we refer means uh, from this book catch book. So, Randy H. Cage contemporary logic design. So, we referred most of the material from this book and uh, also we have uh, referred from this book fundamental of digital circuit by A. Anand Kumar. From this two book uh, we have referred all the materials, but most of the material are covered from this book. So, in the last class also we have defined what is state equivalence some definitions. So, what is state equivalence? So, S1, S2 are equivalent if for every input sequence applied to the machines goes to same next state and output then they are equivalent. So, in row matching method also we use the same similar concepts in partitioning method also we have used similar concepts. So, and what is distinguishable states? If two state S1 and S2 are we can say distinguishable if and only if there exist at least one finite input sequence which produce different output from S1 and S2 then we can say S1, S2 are different, both are distinguishable state. And today mostly our focus will be how to minimize the state of an FSM by FSM using implication chart method, using implication chart method. So, the same example in the last classes we have taken, same example sequence detector. So, sequence detector it is also given in our book. So, we have uh, followed uh, contemporary logic design by catch book. So, in that book also same example is given. So, we are taking the same example. So, what is sequence detector? Inputs are coming in sequence and if it, the sequence is, so suppose if we take 3 bit, 3 bit and if the 3 bit correspond to either 0, 1, 0 then it will output a 1 or if it is 1, 1, 0 then it output a 1. So, 0, 1, 0 or 1, 1, 0 then it is output a 1. So, this is the sequence detector this example and this is the state diagram for our se sequence detector very simplistic state diagram, but it can be minimized and let us minimize the this state diagrams with the uh, implication chart methods. This is the tabular form of the same states FSM tabular state of the same FSM and if you look at this is uh, for S4, if, uh, if you are in S4 and you are getting a 0, then output is 1 and it goes to state S0. And S6 also, if you are in S6 and you are getting a input 0, then we are getting a 1. This is developed from. And what is implication chart method? Let us discuss in more details. So, what we will try to use is actually you will use a data structure. So, particularly two dimensional array that is called x i j and we are using a two dimensional data structure. So, x i j two dimensional array ok. So, we say x array or crossed array. So, the same as uh, x j which is if you look at the array because we are taking state in x axis and another y axis also are taking state. So, next state under all input combinations and if you look at S14 is same as SAM41 in this case because we are using a table. So, cross table. So, 
what is means actually whether it is compatible or not, whether they can be combined or not, whether they are equivalence or not that we are checking and for that we are using an array, two dimensional array. So, two dimensional array with x i g. So, because so we are using implication chart whether it is implies or not for that this can be managed with a half of the array. So, half of the array only this part is required. So, this is actually this part is half of the two dimensional array. So, here you will look at the things in this case it is going up to S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6 ok S1, S2, S3, 5 and S6 and in the x axis we are S0, S1, S2, S3, S4 and S6. So, clearly this uh, part we are removing. So, this part you are removing only this part we are keeping. So, here S thick is removed, here S0 is removed. Okay. So, this part is uh, we are trying to use it of the array x i g and so how to fill, how to use implication chart method, filling the implication chart entry x i j. So, which is correspond to rho is s i and column is s g, rho is s i and column is s g state g and s i is equivalent to s j if output are same and the next state are equivalent. So, what are our definitions? If s i s j are equivalent that means they are for every sequence. Okay, so, the next state and output will correspond, they will match. So, then you can say they are equivalent. So, S i is equivalent to S g if output are the same and next state are equivalent and X i j contain the next state of S i S j which must be equivalent if S i S j are equivalent. So, that is a we are trying to create a tertiary relations kind of thing. Okay. So, if S i S j have different output behavior then X i j is cross out what it means that they are not compatible, we cannot merge into a single state. Okay. So, if S i S j have different output behaviors or next state behavior then X i j is crossed out. So, let us look at from the example. So, this is the uh, FSM table. Okay, so, tabular form of FSM, FSM table and clearly if you look at S4 and S6, their output behaviors, output is 1. For the rest of the cases, for these cases output is 0, but for S4 and S6 the output is 1. What it indicates? It indic indicate S4 and S6 are different as compared to S0, S1, S2, S3 and S5 and how we means fill the implication chart. If S i S j have different output behavior then X i j is crossed out. Okay, so, clearly what we are trying to do? So, in this case S4 and S6 have different output. So, what about S4 have different output behavior with S0, S1, S2, S3 and S5. So, what we are trying to do is S4 is not compatible with S0, S1, S2, S3 okay. and this is a S i g and another thing is a S4 is not compatible with S5. So, these things are crossed, corresponding things are crossed. S4 have different output behavior with S0, S1, S2, S3 and S5. So, what we are trying to say S4, these things are crossed, its corresponding things are crossed. S6 have different output behavior with S0, S1, S2, S3 and S5. So, for S6 also we will try to do the same thing, for S6 also we will try to do same things. If you look at S6, S6 is uh, not compatible with S0, S1, S2, S3 and S5. So, clearly what it says. So, we are crossing out this thing. So, S0, S1, S2, S3 and S5 we are not crossing these guys, we are not crossing these guys. Okay. 
So, next stage is uh, fill other XIG based on next state transitions. So, first uh, based on this output we have done. Now, for the next state we will try to do. So, let us take the state S0 and S1. For S0, so with uh, input 0 it is going to S1 and with input 1 it is going to S2. So, what you are trying to tabulate this thing S0. So, next state is S1 and S2 and for S1 next state is S3 and S4. Okay. And let us write it in this form. So, we are writing in this form. So, in this S0 S and S1 corresponding places in the corresponding places how we are writing. So, in this box we are trying to fill in this x i j point we are filling uh, first one is if you look at. So, S1 S2 this is uh, S1 S2 this is for S0 and this is for S3 S4 this is for S1. Okay. This one is for transition from S0 and this is transition from S1, transition from S0 and transition from S1. In this way we try to fill the table. Okay. So, try to fill the table based on the next state transitions. What we are trying to do? How we are filling? So, this is uh, for all the states whichever is not crossed we are filling. If it is crossed then anyhow we know they are not compatible. So, so we are trying to fill other x i j based on the next state transitions and this is already filled one. And now let us look at how we can implication chart or how it implies. Suppose you take this one S1 and S0, S1, S0, S1 row and S0 column. So, in this case, if you look at S2 and S4 have different IO behavior. S2 and S4, if you look at S2 and S4, are you able to see S2 and S4? So, if you look at S2 and S4, this is corresponding S2 and this is S4. If you look at S2, S4, because this one is for this one is for S0 and this one is for S1 and this is for input 1. So, because S2, S4 for input 1, S2, S4, this is already crossed. S2, S4 have different IO behavior, that means different next state behavior in this case. This implies that S1, S0 cannot be combined. So, this is from S0, from S1, this is for input 0, input 1, this is for input 0 and this is for input 1. And if you look at S2, S4, S2, S4 is already crossed, this thing is already crossed, S2, S4 is already crossed. That means S0, S1 cannot be combined. So, what it says? we can cross this particular box S1, S0 box. This implies that S1, S0 cannot be combined mark with cross. Okay. Similarly, take another examples for this case S2, S6, S2, S6 this one particularly S2, S6. So, this one whenever we say S2, S6, so in this case S0 and S2 cannot be combined. So, in this case S0 and S2 cannot be combined. So, now this thing crossed. So, this thing is S2, S0 cannot be combined. This is crossed. So, now let us look at uh, for this one for uh, S2 and S1 because S1, S6 if you look at S4, S6, S4 and S6 this is uh, not crossed till now not crossed S4 and S6 are same IO behavior. So, this one is and another thing is S3, S5 if you look at S3 and S5. So, this one. So, till now S3, S5 this thing this is not crossed also S4, S6 is not crossed. This is not crossed and this is not crossed till now. So, what you can put this one you can put right symbol not cross symbol. Okay. So, H S1, S0 is already cross 
S1 S0 is already cross, then what it implies? In this case, it is S1 S0. S1 R0 is already crossed. That means this implies S3 S0 is crossed. Okay, so now we can see S4 and S0, S4 and S0. So S4 S0 is already crossed. So if you look at this one is already crossed. Then S3 S1. So S3 S1. So this is S4 S0. This thing is. If you look at this one is already crossed. This one is already crossed. So this implies this will be also crossed. So, this implies x s3 s1 is crossed. So, similarly s6 s6 s0 s6 s0. So, if you look at this thing, this is crossed. This implies s3 s2 s3 s2 because this thing are you able to see this thing is s6 s0 because this thing is already crossed. This thing is already crossed. This implies this will be crossed. So, similarly you can say S2 S0 S2 S0 S2 S0. So, this one is S2 S0 is already crossed. So, this one is already crossed. So, this implies S5 S0. So, S5 S0. So, this thing this one because this thing is already crossed. So, this can be crossed. S5 S0 can be crossed. Similarly, we try to means put cross as much as possible. If you are not able to cross, put right symbols. So, in the second pass, we do not have any further information. Okay. Then, what are the equivalent sets? Many crossed we have put in the array X, okay. but some are still we are not able to put cross and some are still these are actually some not crossed or right symbols one are there in the x array. So, what it signifies in the implication chart? So, it signifies S3 S5 in this case S3 S5 are equivalent, S4 S6 are equivalent and S1 S2 are equivalent. So, this correspond to this one, this correspond to this one and this correspond to this one. So, this says S3, S5 are equivalent, S4, S6 are equivalent, S1, S2 are equivalent and, and based on this we can say because if you look at S3, S5, S3, S5 it goes to S3 dash then S1, S2, S1, S2 goes to S1 dash and S4, S6 goes to S4 dash. So, we are able to reduce this, this S1, S4 to S4 dash, S3, S5 to S3 dash and S1, S2 to S1 dash. So, we are able to successfully reduce 3 states. So, earlier it has 7 states. So, now we are able to make it to 4 state. The same example we have taken for row matching example, then partitioning example, also for implication chart example. Why you have taken the same example because for different method how it works and same example how we can illustrate have, because of that reasons we have taken the same example. Okay. And the minimize FSM is this and it can satisfy both 110 and 010. This is for this is for both 0 and 1. Okay, this is uh, you can say this is for 1, 1, 0 and for this is for 0, 1, 0. So, because it is for both 0, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 0, this is the minimized FSM. This FSM have only 4 state. Okay. So, we have already discussed uh, this uh, three method of uh, FSM state reductions. Now, let us uh, move towards another uh, interesting part of 
FSM design is FSM state encoding. So, this is also part of FSM optimizations. Here we are not reducing the number of state, but we are trying to assign or assign some binary code to each state, so that we can use in state registers, state encoding or state assignments. State assignments are encoding, assigning unique binary value to each state, so that we can implement FSM. Since we do not care about actual flip flop value for each state, we can do that thing. We can assign each state to binary number. We like as long as each state is assigned to a unique binary number. So, what is the constant? Constant is each state need to be assigned to a unique binary number. We cannot assign two binary number to or one binary number to two states. Okay, so, each state is assigned to a unique binary number. So, this is example of a three cycle ledger. So, already taken from this thing from our Frank White book. So, it requires four state and assigning equivalent binary values to code each state. So, this thing can be easily 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. This is simple binary thing we can means assign. So, option available is means four factorial options. This is this one what I have assigned is simple binary sequence, but this sequence can be changed. Why to assign in binary sequence? And if you look at the things, so number of different encoding possibility. So, in this case first one is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. This is the very simplistic sequential binary encoding I have done. But this thing can be changed, you can assign different code for different state, different binary code for different states and the possibility in this case is because 2 bit for each state and there are 4 states and now we have 4 factorial 24 different possibilities are there, 24 different possibilities are there, 4 factorial options and if number of state is higher, here number of state is only 4, if number of state is higher then possibility will be huge n factorial, n state n factorial possibility and this is very difficult to means, uh, uh, means go through all the state assignments. So, state assignments since we do not care about the actual flip flop use okay, as long as each state get assigned to a unique binary number. Suppose you take a FSM of modulus 6 counter, it have 6 state but use 3 bit because uh, 6 state 3 bit you need to use 6 state. So, we have actually uh, 8 C 6 number of means different possible state encoding is possible, possible choosing the 6 state from 8 total state then number of encoding is huge 8 C 6 which number is very huge and you cannot uh, simply test uh, all the things. Okay. And if you look at the state encoding, the cost and delay of FSM implementation depend on encoding of the symbolic states. The same thing post state can be encoded in 4 factorial ways, 24 different ways and there are more than n factorial encoding for n states. So, more than means uh, in generally n factorial different encoding states and exploration of all encoding is really impossible. So, we cannot say more than but n factorial different encoding for n different state and exploration of all encoding is impossible. Therefore, in general we use some heuristics why to explore all if it is exponential. So, the heuristics are one hot encoding, so minimum bit change encoding or prioritize adjacency encoding. Okay, we will discuss all uh, three encodings. So, let us take example what is the I mean, basic encoding. So, this is encoding 1, encoding 2 and encoding 3. So, there are in this case how many states? We have 5 states and we require 3 bit and this is binary simplistic sequential encoding. This is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 and 1, 0, 0. So, simply 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is very sequential encoding in this we are doing. Whether this sequential encoding is good or bad or how much it will reduce the 
circuit complexity we do not know. So, this is a kind of encoding. This is another encoding is gray encoding. So, what is gray encoding is between any two sequence. So, bit flip is 1, Hamming distance is 1, 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1. This is the only one bit flip. So, between this HD is equal to 1, among this HD is equal to 1, Hamming distance is bit flip is 1. So, in this case, no bit flip, no bit flip, this is bit flip. So, in this case also, HD is equal to 1, Hamming distance is equal to 1. So, no bit flip, no bit flip, only one bit flip. In this case also, HD is equal to 1. So, no bit flip, no bit flip, this is bit flip. So, between two adjacent core, the bit flip is 1, Hamming distance is 1. And this is another encoding. So, this is another encoding, yet another encoding. So, binary and gray core encoding use minimum number of bit for that storage. Okay. So, if you use uh, binary encoding, so use minimum number of bits for the state register. So, there are gray and Johnson code. So, two adjacent code differ only by one bit. So, Johnson code also similar. So, reduce simultaneous switching because uh, Hamming distance uh, 1 between two adjacent code Hamming distance 31 it cannot be 0 because the two state need to be means assigned different code every state need unique that means it cannot be 0 and minimum will be 1 and whenever you say minimum distance uh, code then it reduces the crosstalk reduce the glitches. So, let us look at about a very simplistic encoding binary or sequential encoding already you have seen, but let us look at one hot encoding. What is one hot encoding? One hot encoding is one flip flop per state encoding. So, in this case it lead to larger or greater number of flip flop than the binary encoding possibly a simpler logic, but next stage logic may be simpler because you are using one's flip flop per state. Okay. Some state assignment are better than others. The state assignment influence the complexity of the state machines and the conventional logic required in the next state machines design is dependent on the state assignments. And there are two type of assignment one is if we look at uh, this binary and gray they use uh, n flip flop if number of state is uh, up to 2 to the power n. I guess if it is uh, a 5 state then number of flip flop will be 3, if it is 4 then it will be 2. So, for up to 2 to the power n it uses n flip flop. Okay. So, and for 1 hot encoding, so for n state it uses n flip flop. Let us look at uh, one example, concrete examples. Design a FSM that detect sequence of 2 or more sequence, more consecutive 1 on an input bit stream. If number of 1 is more than 1 in the sequence, then it uh, output a 1. So, FSM should output 1 when the sequence is detected and a 0 otherwise. So, what is if it is continuous 1 is 2 ones are there, then it will detect. So, if this is examples in this case, so because in the last 2 input, this is the one are there, so we are outputting one. So in this case also it is one. Okay. Next is in this case only one input. In this case two input. In this case it is one, and in this case we have uh, two. In this case also two. So because of last two input sequences, if it is uh, one, then we are outputting a one. And FSM state diagrams are for this is this. So initially we are in state zero state 0, if we are getting a 1, suppose input sequence w is equal to 1, then we are going to state 1 and if we are getting another 1, then we are going to next state s 2 and in this case our output is 1 and if we are getting a next 1, then it will stay in the same state and output 1. If we are getting a 0, then it will go to state 0 and in from state 1, if we are getting a 0, then it will go to S0. This is the FSM of that problem. So, now our current problem is how to assign states, how to do state encoding. So, this is the uh, present state and next state. This is still it is we are showing in states. 
it is not encoded okay so not encoded so same fsm diagram is represented in the state table and if you encode suppose if you use binary encoding so what you are doing s0 you are doing 00 01 10 and this is anyhow we have three state so this thing is s4 we don't use so for this case we are using don't care suppose you use don't care and because uh, this fsm is uh, initially it will go to s0 state and its fsm is complete it will not enter to state s4 unwanted state it will not enter Yes, for all input we are considering for state s0 s1 s2 both input 0 and 1 is considered that means this fsm is complete and correct because of that it will not go to other state that means we can clearly use the don't care for the this last remaining states which is not used and if we use binary encoding very simplistic encoding then so what you are assigning is for s0 you are assigning 00 for this 01 for this 10 if you are doing this simple binary sequence encoding then this is the current state this is the next state and based on the current state so next state is uh, encoded because next state is uh, 0 1 1 this is uh, s2 and this thing so based on this input and we want to generate the three output qa qb and z and what will be the circuit and you can solve for using kernel map and we will get this equations this is how we uh, implement the fsm and this is the logic for binary encoding similarly for if you do a gray encoding gray encoding so the state are 0 0 0 1 and 1 1 so in this case this is the bit flip this is no bit flip in this case this is no bit flip and this is the bit flip so state are encoded with gray code between two adjacent one so gray code is one so this is a suppose s0 s1 and s2 so in this case it is we are showing in sequence so 0 0 0 1 and then 1 1 so in this case if you do this thing so i have uh, retabulated the next state retabulated the next state based on the this coding based on the this coding based on the this coding and if we do this thing then if we optimize for qa as uh, this is data input a d flip flop input a d flip flop input b and z this is for the next state and this is for output logic then we are getting this circuit and clearly you can see so this is actually huge many littles and this app actually this circuit will be much better off as a smaller one okay let us look at another one hard encoding so in this case instead of a two flip flop we are using three flip flop we have three state and we are using three flip flop because we are using three flip flops so we require means three input so qa uh, da db and dc because output logic is dependent on each state have different so output logic will be much simpler okay so in this case output logic we are not showing so in one hard encoding so this is the tabulated one based on this okay and based on this this is tabulated one so s0 if it is uh, getting a w0 getting to s0 otherwise it is going to s1 so similarly we are retabulated the thing okay so in this retabulations after retabulations we need to calculate the input for da db and dc and also we need to use calculate for z and if you look at the z what is the z z value is it only depend upon the state s2 z value is 1 only on s2 so clearly if you are in state s2 that means directly if this value is 1 then this is this signifies it is z okay so this signifies that means value of qa so it signifies actually z okay so value of qa signifies z so we do not need our extra output logic for this case because uh, if state is dependent output is dependent on states okay and one hot encoding if we are doing then we do not require so that is why we tabul not tabulated for z we tabulated for we derive function from 
input d a d b and d c and this is the showing state encoding. So, this is a simple binary encoding for 7 states ok. This is the gray encoding binary encoding means this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 very simplistic sequential encoding between this if you look at between this humming distance is always 1. So, this is a bit flip this is the bit flip this is no bit flip no bit flip. So, this is the no bit flip no bit flip bit flip. So, every consecutive one have actually humming distance 1 in Johnson also similar things happens. If we look at no bit flip bit flip no bit flip bit flip this one is bit flip. So, every consecutive one only one because this is 7 states are there. So, we require 7 this is 8 states are there. So, we require 8 flip flop and in 1 hundred encoding. So, every state have 1 flip flop 1. So, that means, uh, if you look at every state one corresponding flip flop is 1 and rest of the flip flop are 0 for a particular state only one flip flop will be 1 ok. So, 1 hundred encoding is a very simplistic encoding, but require more number of flip flops ok. So, the cost and delay of FSM already we have stated it depend upon the encoding and symbolic states and for 4 state it is 4 factorial as n factorial different encoding for n states exploration of all encoding is impossible. So, therefore, heuristic are used ok. So, what is the heuristic already you have uh, set at 1 hundred encoding ok minimum bit change. So, minimum bit change let look at the minimum bit change one more time ok. So, for bigger examples and another very interesting heuristic is parity adjacency heuristics. So, it is 1 hundred encoding in this examples. So, there are 3 states ok. So, use redundant encoding which in which one flip flop is assigned to each state. So, if you look at A, B and C ok. So, A is assigned 0 0 1, B is 0 1 0 and C is 1 0 0. So, this is 1 flip flop per state ok. So, and if you look at every time. So, here 2 1. So, in this case 2 flip flop are 0 1 flip flop in this case also 2 flip flop are 0 1 flip flop is 1 ok. So, so in this way it is uh, 1 hot encoding at a time 1 will be hot ok. So, rest of the will be not hot ok. So, cold. So, in state A only this will be hot and rest of this will be cold that is what is 1 hot encoding. So, each state is distinguishable by its own flip flop having a value 1 while other have a value of 0 that is why it is 1 hot at the name suggest. And another is minimum bit change encoding. So, assign code to the states so that the total number of bit change for all state tension is minimized. So, looking at the FSM, so try to uh, assign for each arc of FSM. So, try to minimize the total humming distance. In other words, for every arc in the FSM state diagrams has a weight. Now, weights are coming from encoding ok. Choose the encoding and so that uh, total weight is minimized. So, that is equal to the number of bits by which the source and destination encoding differs. So, every arc have weight ok in the state diagrams and the weight is equal to the number of bit by which the source state and destination state encoding differs. And this strategy would select that one minimize the sum of all the weights. So, minimum bit change encoding its strategy would select the one encoding that minimize the sum of all the weights that means total bit change of the FSM need to be minimized. So, this is a example of a minimum bit coding. So, this is a 4 states counter state forward counter. So, suppose there is a 2 bit counter ok. So, this is 4 states are there and this very simplistic uh, their counting. So, if you encode these things with uh, 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 simplistic encoding then for each time sums, what is the bit change? If you look at for this case bit change is 1 
for this state bit change is because 0 1 1 1 0 this is also bit change this is also bit change. So, in this case having distance 2 in this case having distance is 1 0 2 1 1. So, in this case this is a bit change this is a bit change, but this is not for bit change. ok. So, in this case having distance is 1 ok. So, total Hamming distance for this is 6 for sequential encoding, but if you change the gray encoding. So, 0 0 to 0 1 after 0 1 we are putting 1 1 and then 1 0. So, every cases it is 1 1 1 1. So, in this case Hamming distance is 4 total Hamming distance 4. So, this total Hamming distance or total bit change for the FSM is 4 in this case. In this case it is 4 in this case it is 6 ok. So, minimum change encoding we try to do minimum change encoding if we do minimum change encoding. So, chances is there it may result at means uh, smaller complexity or lesser complexity next state logic. And idea of adjacency from key map the same things we get from the k map whenever you do in k map also. So, this thing we have taken from uh, standard book ok our cache book. Suppose inputs are a and b and next states are state variable y1 and y2 and an output f a b y1 y2 or f y1 y2 and next state functions suppose g is a b y1 y2. So, then what in the k map how will represent? We represent in a means uh, suppose a b and a b and y1 y2 then what happens? because of adjacency if Hamming distance is low how they get grouped because these two get grouped because of Hamming distance 1. So, these two get grouped because Hamming distance 1. So, these two get grouped because of Hamming distance 1 these two get grouped because of Hamming distance 1. So, adjacency in the k map table nearby that means they have Hamming distance 1 and the most important thing is in k map larger cluster produce smaller logic functions cluster min term differ in one variable. So, cluster min term this is the most important thing. So, cluster min term differ in one variable and which get inferred from the Hamming distance Hamming distance if you minimize the total Hamming distance of the FSM arc for all the arcs then it will read means uh, produce a smaller circuit minimize circuit. So, clearly size on of implementations it depend upon number of product term determines the number of gates and number of literals in a product term determines the number of input which is proportional to number of transistor. So, that means size of the circuit and hardware area proportional to total number of literals and clearly in this examples what our saying is suppose one functions f 1 have this is a b c d plus a dash b dash c dash d dash plus a, a dash b dash c d and a dash b dash c d dash. So, in this case if you look at so, this have actually many things and it have 16 literals 16 literals, but this one is f 2 have 6 literals. So, whenever number of literals are less then circuit will be smaller circuit will be smaller and clearly how to minimize literals. So, if you can in k map if you can cluster a bigger one ok. So, if you can make a large cluster produce smaller logic functions smaller number of literals larger clusters and larger cluster they have if for larger cluster nearby means uh, points or nearby places have less Hamming distance that is the logic and based on this thing we let us formulate the heuristics heuristic rules. So, priority so rule 1 rule 2 and rule 3 there are 3 rules and let us discuss this rule 1 by 1 rule 1. So, common destinations state that have same next state for some fixed input some suppose some fixed input should assign to logically adjacent code. If they are going to the 
Sam next it. So, Sam next it. So, from the states they are going to the Sam next it. Try to assign logically adjacent code. You cannot assign Sam code, but logically adjacent one bit flip. Okay. In this examples, so state that have Sam next state. If you look at for this 0 input from state S1 and S2, both goes to S3. That means try to assign adjacent code to S1 and S2. So, input value of 0 will move to both state in the same next state S3. So, for this input value 0, both from S1 and S2 going to state S3. Because of this, we try to assign adjacent codes to S1 and S2. So, another rule is a common source. States that are next state of same states, state that are next state of same states under logically adjacent input should assign logically adjacent code. So, what is the meaning? So, let us see. So, state that are next state of the same state, next state of the same states. So, from S0, what is the next state? S1, S2 are next state. Okay. For different input, adjacent input 0 and 1, these are adjacent input 0 and 1, not the same adjacent input, they are going to S1 and S2. Now, try to assign adjacent code to S1 and S2. So, for rule 1 also, for this we are trying to assign S1, S2 nearby code, for rule 2 also we are trying to do the same thing. What is rule 3? So, rule 3 is common output. State that have same output value for the same input should be assigned logically adjacent code. So, what it says? So, same output value, next state logic it may reduces. Okay. Same input value should assign to adjacent code. Okay. State that have same output values. So, if you look at the states that have same output values. So, if you look at this is output value 0 for the same input from the same input values should assign the same states. If you look at S0 and S2 in this case, here S0 and S1, in this case S0 and S1. So, they have same input and same output. For the same input, they are producing same output. So, state that have same output value for the same input. So, S0 and S1 have same output for the same input values. So, state S0 and S1 have same output value 0 for the same input value 0. So, that is why we are making S0, S1 adjacent. And if you look at these things, another thing is state that have same using the same rule. So, state that have the same output of our same input, so we should assign similar code. So, in this case S2 and S3 for input 0, it is producing the same output 1. S2, S3 try to assign adjacent code. This is for rule 3. So, there are 3 rules, rule 1, rule 2 and rule 3 and based on this rule, so try to assign the code. And for these things, applying the rule. S1, S2 try to assign Hamming distance 1 sim smaller code, rule 2 S1, S2 same thing. So, already you have done rule 3 S0, S1 and S2, S3 should be assigned to similar code. So, in this case S0, S1 also try to assign adjacent code, S2, S3 also assigns similar code and S1, S2 try to assign similar code. Okay. So, if you look at S1, S2. So, S0, S1 we try to S1, S2. So, if you look try to this, in this case Hamming distance is 1. Okay. S0 and S1. So, in this case S0, S1, if you look at S0, S1, in this case Hamming distance is 1. 
So, in this case Hamming distance is 1 and S 2 S 3. So, in this case S 2 S 3 this one S 2 and S 3 Hamming distance is 1. So, this one is what code have assigned. Okay. So, S D of S 0 S 2 if you look at S 0 and S 2. So, these are actually different this one. So, in this case we can assign Hamming distance little bit bigger one. And with this, so if you look at the another example, in this case uh, we are trying to assign minimum code for this things we are not carrying, okay. For S1, S3 also we are not carrying, for this also we are not carrying, but for this things we are carrying, for this we are carrying, and for this we are carrying, but not for this and this based on rules. And let us look at another examples. So, in this case, uh, if you based on this rule, so rule 1, so for this FSM, okay, for this FSM, so A and C goes to the SAM next state A and C, if you look at A and C, goes to the next state D for the SAM input, if you look at for the input 1, for the input 1, it goes to the SAM state, that means A and C should be nearby, okay, for rule 1 A and B, A and B for this A and B, if you look at goes to the same next state C for input 0, this is for input 0 and it goes to the same for here also it goes from here B also it goes to. That means, A and B goes to the same next state C for input 0. Try to make adjustment A and C and A and B for from rule 1. This is a rule 1 and this is for rule 1 for a and B are adjacent and A and C are adjacent. B and D rule 2. So, what is rule 2? So, if you look at rule 2, if they have, uh, if you look at B and D based on the rule 2. So, what rule 2 says? Rule 2 says C and D, B and D, if you look at are next state of C for the input 0 and 1. B and D, we look at B and D are the next state of C, next state of C. So, this is actually next state of C, this is per from C 0 input, from C 1 input. B and D are the next state of C per input 0 and 1. Similarly, C and D, C and D are next state of A based on input 0 and 1. Okay. So, this is for rule 2. Okay. Based on this thing, so what we are trying to do based on these rules, try to rule 1, rule 2 based on this. So, try to assign code, what are assigned? A and B are adjacent, try to make adjacent, A and B are adjacent, then A and C are adjacent, this is A and C, this one is A and B this one is A and B, this is A and C, this one C and D are adjacent, C and D are adjacent and B and D are adjacent, B and D are adjacent. In this case, A is not adjacent to D and C is not adjacent to B. A B adjacent, A C adjacent, C D adjacent, B D adjacent and that is why B and C and A and D are not adjacent. If you look at B, C and A, D, they are not adjacent. And if you do state assignments, so suppose uh, this is a another example state assignments. So, there are four state A, B, C, D with the very simplistic one. So, so what we are trying to assign is, if you look at the earlier example, A, C, what code we got? For A is 0, 0, B is 0, 1, A is 0, 0, B is 0, 1, C is 1, 0 and D is 1, 1. So, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So, basically D is 1, 1. And between B and D, if you look at uh, B and C, B and C, their Hamming distance is 0, 1 and 1, 0, B and C, Hamming distance is 2 and between A and D, A and D, 
0 0 and 1 1 Hamming distance is 2. So, B C are not adjacent and A and D are not adjacent B C and A D are not adjacent. If you do this encoding then this is the present state based on encoding, this is the next state based on encoding and this is the output and if you solve Z Y plus and Y 2 then what you are getting. So, if you look at the things this is for solution for Z this is K max K map uh, we are solving using K map and this is uh, for Y 1 and this is for Y 2 and if you look at the things. So, clearly this Y particularly Y 1 and Y 2 have 5 products and 10 literals. So, this have 5 products term this uh, Y 1 and Y 2 have 5 product terms and 10 literals and if you use arbitrary assignments. So, 0 0 0 1 1 1 and 1 0. So, this is not following the adjacency one ok. If you look at A C and B D. So, if you look at uh, this thing. So, B is 0 1 and D is 1 1. So, in this case what we are trying to do is B 0 1 and this is D is B D is 0 1 and 1 0. So, this case B D is uh, 2. So, in this case if you do these things it will result a means a bigger circuits. So, if you solve using this Z. So, if you do for Z, Y and Y 2. So, this will produce a 6 product term and 14 literals which is a, a bigger than the previous result previous one. So, 5 product and 10 literals. If you look at this encoding, so this is this encoding is this one 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 and this encoding is 0 0 0 1 1 1 and 1 0. So, this is different encoding. So, this one is different encoding. So, any arbitrary encoding. So, not designed based on rule. If you design based on rule then we are getting a good encoding. So, this encoding ok this encoding if you are designing with rule we are getting this encoding, but if you do a, any arbitrary encoding arbitrary encoding then it will result bigger circuits. So, this have actually 6 product term and will have 14 literals ok. Because of this regions, so it will result a bigger circuit as compared to the earlier one. So, state encoding play an important role in actually next state logic particularly next state logic will be simpler if we use this heuristics rule 1, rule 2 and rule 3 adjacency heuristics and which actually try to minimize uh, total hamming distance of the FSM ok FSMR and it will ultimately try to reduce the overall number of product terms and literals ok. And this finishes uh, our FSM optimizations particularly state optimization reduction of number of state and how to encode nicely the state so that it will result with little smaller circuit minimize circuits next state logic circuits thank you mm -hmm.